thank you neelam ji for joining us for an ians interview a digital interview i'm sure you must be tired of all interviews by now so many digital interactions happening nowadays i know they are but i'm flattered that i must to do them thank you thank you the pleasure is all ours so uh, neelam ji tell me a little about how home alone your latest production was conceived well you know it's got uh, we still haven't decided on a name we are still in the process right. i think some kind of graph has emerged so okay. we're just pulling out other things actually i got a phone call from arundhati nag a message right. actually the theater director uh, who runs the ranga shankara in bangalore mm -hmm. so she said why don't you do something which is about 40 minutes which we can then stream on zoom okay. and maybe when things open up Right. have physical performances okay. so i said okay oh, let me it sounds like a good idea why not right so then she told me that uh, she's asked abhishek majumdar to do also something similar okay and okay. It, it's left to what we decide right we wish to so i looked at some short stories some texts because the texts as you know the way i work is the text becomes a starting point to trigger off many other things that one is engaged in but this time it was like you can't escape the space we are in right. i do know that abhishek uh, majumdar is doing uh, destimona and othello right. one part of their um, conversation in different ways mm -hmm. that how the same text done by the same director can be done in multiple ways so i found that quite an interesting uh, concept right um, so then you know rocky is here vansh bhardwaj who's worked with me for many many years mm. he he was in bombay but because of the virus he didn't want to be alone in his flat right. so he decided to come to chandigarh which is where his family lives Okay. So I thought, you know, Rocky is here, such a wonderful actor. Mm -hmm. I, it's a good opportunity for us to explore something together. Mm -hmm. So we started on this point and that thought and this idea, but ultimately, you can't escape the times that you're passing through, right. and the fears and the the um, uncertainties, the vulnerabilities, the possibilities, mm -hmm. uh, how it is viewed. uh where do we find human information uh, how do we deal with it all these issues which you are all engaged with became right. the raw material right. for the work that we have done okay okay so uh, you explore text by chekhov and mantu but essentially this is just the base it would be an improvisational performance which you mostly do so could you add a little to that Well, I think we started off with Chekhov and Monto, but now it, there's no Chekhov and no Monto. Okay. Uh, it's just to do with an idea which uh, was planted, and the idea grew. Right. It grew in terms of uh, the the physical space that we created, in which the uh, which the actor was or the character was placed. Uh, what do you do? You know, we we use things like numbers and counting. Yeah. And. Um, Uh, made that almost into a liet motif almost into like a mantra right. uh, so actually it is just to do with the the only you know yesterday my son kabir asked me who is this character who's in his room 10 foot by 10 foot room right. i said you know that's an, that we haven't we haven't thought of hmm. so i asked uh, rocky today i said rocky who are you hmm. so he said i'm an actor an out of work actor mm -hmm. so today whatever he did was the out of work actor who doesn't have his audience who doesn't have his space mm -hmm. but makes a burden to his audience right right you know makes the wind into the audience mm -hmm. makes the water into the 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 rain into his audience that he can see by putting his hand outside the window right. so we I personally feel it's a very interesting piece that emerged today. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad we're talking today because I have a much more definitive um, 
idea about where we are moving. Mm. So there's storytelling, mm. there's movement, mm. there's depression, mm. there's fatigue, mm. there's a sense, it's a very existentialist space that has been created. Which is derived from the time we live in right now, the COVID time. Absolutely. Mm. So in a certain way, the, the times, the, the whole story has emerged from what each one of us have, is, is feeling individually and collectively. Okay, okay. So I understand you must have been asked this a number of times, but uh, what is it about building a play with the team and not depending on a bound script that fascinates you? If you've been doing it for the past 20 years now, obviously. No, no. Uh, you know, the thing is, I started off by working on what you call the well-made play. Yeah. With the beginning, a middle and an end. Yes. Uh, but even within that, I realized in retrospect, I was tossing it around. Mm. I was reassembling, constituting the material. Right. Which is what I presume mm. every actor does. Or, I beg your pardon, every director does. Right. You, you, you have, even if you have a bound script, mm. even within that, this interpretation, this right. individual assertion, mm. this points of view. Hmm. There is what you are pulling out of the text because the text becomes a classical text hmm. when it contains within hmm. multiple stories. There's no singular story. Hmm. There are many stories within a story. Within a story. So hmm. what is the position you take and what are the elements that you pull out of that hmm. narrative depends right. upon um, really your own politics, your own social and political Mm. Um, economic uh, gender position that you're taking. Mm. So even within that, there is interpretation. Right. But for the last seven, eight years, mm. uh, pre-existing texts do not suit what I'm searching for. And what are this you is not a judgment. A this is I mean, by doing the play, you say that like uh, the text does not suit what you are searching for. At this point, you know, since the last five, six years, mm. that pre-existing texts do not uh, suit what I'm searching for. Right. This is not a rejection. This is a choice. Right. Uh, so what we've been doing is, it's not that we've eliminated text. You know, text is a essential material mm. for mm. Uh, creating... Uh, I mean, I don't do dance movement, yes. physical theater. What yes. I am doing is, it is a narrative-based theater. It is a, it does have a story. It does have a development. But okay. how it develops, does it develop in a linear manner, mm. in circularity, in loops, in swirls? Mm. That is the choice you make. Right. You might imagine that this kind of way of working is freer, but it's much more difficult because you never know when to start and where it's going to end because yeah. you've got nothing to hold on to except mm. somewhere your own sense of how you look at the story. Um, um, so what I do is, you know, the last couple of plays I've done, I've been working very closely with Sadat Hassan Manto. Right. I've been taking, I've taking, taken sometimes three stories and put them together. Mm. In fact, I was in Delhi when, when the NST shut down for because of COVID. Yeah. I was doing uh, Antiquary right. by Jean Onavi and Sokolis, both mm. the versions, and mm. dovetailing it with Toba Takes. Okay. Uh, mm. It's about both of them searching in a graveyard. Right. She goes to the graveyard to search for her brother's body. Mm. And he's in a no man's land. Mm. So, even if you take text, how you kind of, how you kind of manage it, mm. how you kind of, um, how you pull different strands, sometimes completely contradictory strands, strands hmm. uh, separate strands, and kind of weave it into a, into a, into a communicable uh, hmm. connection with the actors, with yourself, hmm. and hopefully later with the audience, hmm. is really something which has been my struggle as an artist. Right. So, Neelamji, in these times, we are also witnessing that now, you know, art galleries have started opening up with physical edu uh, exhibitions. And uh, we are going to have the Kochi Biennale. So, what do you post in yeah. the theatre? Well, I believe, uh, I've heard that they've started uh, opening up what you call open-air theatres. Right, yes. 
uh, which is you can perform in a open space. Yes. Um, uh, but you know, it's like uh, Andre Gide's The Plague, mm. the book that he wrote on the plague. He said, even when the plague was not mm. existing, you know, even, yeah. but people who had experienced the plague, the memory of that fear yeah. continuously pursued them. Mm. While they were opening a cupboard or opening a trunk, there was a sense of that fear. Right. So how do we eradicate that fear? Mm. Um, will be the journey that all of us will have to take mm. individually to buy a ticket to go into an auditorium. Right. Um, you know, you go to the you go to the bank, but there's always a tentativeness. Mm. There's always that dodging, mm. uh, not be too near anybody. Yeah. Even when you receive money, you're mm. kind of a little unsure about yeah. how to put it back into your bag. Right. So I think those fears take a long time to be expunged from your psyche, mm. from your system, mm. from your. I mean, how habits get formed. In such a short span is a mystery. Yeah. It's going to be six months of COVID. Yeah. But uh, we have already formed a new caste system. Hmm. It's like a caste system. Yeah. You know, you give uh, water to the hmm. postman who comes or the hmm. courier person he wants to. You give, a, give him a cold drink or hmm. somebody comes to your house and you put all your buttons in vinegar water. Right. So a lot, uh, lot of new... Um, uh, new habits hmm. have started coming into play. Hmm. Maybe one good thing is that we'll become cleaner as a nation, <laughs> wash our hands before we sit down for a meal. Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, as you said, you know, it's been six months now almost. But uh, I can't help asking this, you know, across the world in the West, the government, the state has done something for the artists, understanding that freelance artists, it's tough for them to support themselves in these times. Now, what we are witnessing is that, you know, so many youngsters from major cities, artists, have gone back to their native places because they can't even afford the rent. So what are your thoughts on it? I mean... Well, uh, my thoughts are that it's quite uh, disturbing because what has sustained everyone during this uh, lockdown? Right. It's really been music, films, literature. Hmm. It's really been the arts which hmm. has sustained people. Hmm. And yet to be so cavalier towards hmm. uh, the artist right. is uh, it's just so shocking and so hmm. uh, brutal hmm. to know that your life has no significance. Your contribution in humanizing society or mm. sensitizing society mm. has been, has just been of no value. Right. Your own life is valued mm. by the attitude of the state and the government. Mm. Initially, one tried a lot talking to the academies, yes. pleading with them that, you know, money, uh, the budgets have come for your 2020 yes, because March, mm. by March, what has come? Right. You're not going to call a play f as some film actors or, you know, um, yeah. uh, they've been spending their money mm. calling um, plays which seem to have some TV star or some television actor and right. pay them huge sums of money. Mm. That anyway is not going to happen now. Mm. So why don't you give that money to young people to do workshops and to do um, make plays which they right. can't do at the present moment, which mm. they will honor once. It this is not up. going to be forever. Mm. If the Spanish flu didn't last and the Great Plague didn't last right. and swine flu didn't last, this will also ease out. Yeah. But it was like, uh, it was like uh, speaking to people who are deaf, blind and dumb. Mm. They were least interested. They had, it was almost like they, they were not acknowledging that... Uh, huh artists existed and artists came under non-essential items yes hmm. but yet when you study civilization hmm. you know if you're an anthropologist or an archaeologist hmm. you study lost civilizations through artifacts right hmm. through pottery through utensils through things that you dig out whether it is 
hmm. uh, you know, from Mahijan Daru, the dancing girl or the yeah. stage or the beast or whatever. And yet you are so, or the bull, but you're so, so indifferent to hmm. the real light of the artist. Hmm. It's quite sad. Hmm. I think people spoke to the local MP, they spoke to hmm. the advisor. I wrote to the advisor of the city. No cognition, no response. Hmm. Hmm. So it's like my entire life has been trashed. Yes, I understand. Uh, and how did the lockdown treat you personally as a theatre artist? As somebody who cannot work and is at home. So what was going on in the mind? Uh, as, um, so can't I also, you know, in fact, I also felt that I'd reached that stage in my life and I was quite happy to say, I've done my work. You know, I've done lots of productions, I've taught. I'm quite happy to just do nothing. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not, I, in terms of my 40 years of being in theatre, hmm. I'm not talking about age at all, but I just feel I'd reached a point when I was, but I felt like, like my life's work, I was happy uh, maybe taking a few classes here, but that whole, uh, the whole race yes. had ceased to exist within me. Hmm. I didn't feel to be in every festival or to be, in, to be all over the place, you know, which perhaps you feel in your 30s, 40s, and even in your 50s. In right. your 60s, you've, you've kind of done all that. Yes. Uh, no sense of loss. Right. Uh, but I think there's been a lot of angst. Hmm. And the angst really comes from seeing thousands of people walking home, yeah. brutalized by the system, hungry, hmm. jobless. The loss of hope, I can say. Hmm. You know, no matter how savage the times are, mm -hmm. even the very fact that you're performing the savage times yes. has already shown the existence of hope. Hmm. But I think what is happening now, the sense of hope seems to hmm. have died down right. by the winds that are blowing around us. Hmm. Um, you know, I feel what have I done to have food on my table and a roof over my head mm. when my fellow brethren mm. are in such a disturbed and such a terrifying space. Mm. So I cannot separate my life from the life of the people around me. Mm. I don't want to sound like a bleeding heart uh, idiot, but nevertheless, mm. I think my life is linked with many lives. Each life is literally a part of a chain. Right. Uh, so that has been quite disturbing. Hmm. It's suddenly like I feel that the COVID has brought out the worst in people. You hmm. know, the crust of civilization is very thin. Hmm. You know, the swamp exists as much as the light. Hmm. Uh, today you see more the swamp than the light. Hmm. So that is whether it is the Riya Chakravarti case, yeah. whether it is the witch hunt, it reminds me of the crucible, you know, um, uh, Arthur Miller's The Crucible, you know, where hmm. okay, you know, to see the right. like I was in fact just thinking that if it hadn't, if it wasn't Ganja, it would have been some traffic violation True. that had been done a couple of years ago. It's almost like the collective. Uh, Consciousness has to be assuaged by making a person a victim. Hmm. It's terrifying. Hmm. I find it quite terrifying that how perfectly decent and nice people, hmm. people that you like and people that you know yeah. can have such a uh, uh, savage or brutal streak within them hmm. where they're okay with, with something like this happening. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, it's been a time. It's been a time of uh, sadness. It's been a time of healing for me, mm -hmm. because uh, you know, it is. A, it has been a time of finding out that I can be alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been. It's been. Uh, it's been a complex time. Okay. With uh, so there is no single response because there's no single emotion that right. one has dealt with. 
Right. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. As always, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. And great luck Thank with you. your production. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.